Take a pocket every hour Be vascular, good and breezy All the time, time, time Be vascular, good and breezy All the time Here we are again in Jens's kitchen for food notes number 19, I think it's today. Whoa. And that's a, it's a wonderful spring day out here, uh, Easter Monday, where we're recording this. And um, we're gonna have a real special dish here today. Well, today we're gonna uh, cook the Swiss national dish. And of course, you probably have guessed it already, it's gonna be fondue, uh, Swiss cheese fondue. What we're gonna do today we're gonna uh, show you just the basic recipe of, of what it is. Of course, there's gonna be variations, but we're really looking forward to uh, cooking this meal. The ingredients. We need some Swiss cheese, and uh, the more cheesy it is, the better. So a good ripe Gruyere is good. And I got some Swiss cheese here, which is like an Emmental, but what you call Swiss cheese here in, uh, in America. Well, altogether, we got 800 grams about, which is roughly a little less than two pounds. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Then we need some lemon, white wine, cherry brandy, little cornstarch, nutmeg, and pepper. Yes. And then, of course, we need bread. Um, and then you look at this bread here. Uh, this, this is, this is the, the kind of bread that we like for the fondue because it's nice and crusty. You can see it's quite hard. Uh, it's not stale, it's just, it's just hard. It was made yesterday, mm -hmm. uh, got a nice crust. And um, how to make a bread like that, you can see in our episode 11, uh, where we make the Dutch oven bread. Yeah. Or you can just buy bread, you know, that has a nice, that is, you know, sticks together. Wonder bread or, you know, it wouldn't work so well because it just falls off the fork. That's why. And a nice crust will help it as well. There's not much for me to do today. Oh, it's a, I do more of the meat, but this is a vegetarian thing. So Jens is the, is the cheese guy. He's gonna handle the cheese. I always love cheese. Oh, I yeah. was crazy about always. cheese. Always. And you know, so in Switzerland, they use, in every region, they use different kinds of cheese, uh, you know, to put in. Basically, Gruyere and, and Swiss, which is like we said, Emmental, is in almost every fondue mix in Switzerland. But then they do additional cheeses in sometimes even soft cheeses, you know, um, but they also put uh, you know, Bacherin, which makes it a Fribourg, uh, more of a Fribourg uh, uh, region. Appenzell. Appenzell, you know, and like we said before, you know, it, it can be really a, a stinky cheese in a sense, yes. you know, and we have, every region has its own cheeses um, from, uh, from the Alps. And what we, what we have in Switzerland, we have the valleys, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we have the flatlands, they look like the Appalachians here. And then we have uh, the, the Alpine region. And then there's always a hump up, you know, from the valley up and up on these meadows, on these high meadows, before the real just rock and Alps just start, there's, there's the, and it, it, always snow and ice. Well, there is the cows, they're grazing in the summer. And uh, the farmers up there make cheese, you know, to preserve the milk. And they send these, the cheeses, down to the to the villages, you know, on shoots or on, on little gondolas, and uh, it's a, it's a spectacular thing. So, but they all taste different. They all have different sizes. Mm -hmm. So, and that's why. But they most of them always put Gruyere and that cheese in, it and then mix it with some other cheeses. Yes, the uh, dish originated in the French part of Switzerland, yes. in the mountains, and therefore it's called fondue, which is just melted in French, right? Yes. It comes from that from fondue. And um, the um, nice thing about fondue is that it really unites all of Switzerland in its in its in its thing. You know, we 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 share this with everybody that that, that is in Switzerland lives in Switzerland. It's a, it's really a, a wonderful thing. So to start this off, you know, we got to cut the cheese a little bit and then grind it. So I'm just gonna grate, just it, yeah. grate it. I'm sorry, not grind it, <laughs> grate it. And so I got to cut the the peel off. And you got to be generous with, with cutting the peel off because well, not too well, much. I'm always a little greedy. But it's it's uh, <laughs> you want to get rid of. You don't want this is to be so, in the in the in the dish. Yeah. 
Niels, you have a machine to to uh, to grind this, right? Yes, absolutely. Yes. I, well, I, we could use the uh, the roasty grinder too, right? The potato grinder. The potato grinder that we used for the roasty would be would be actually fine. You could use this this uh, mm -hmm. the kind of block one that we have, or mm -hmm. the flat one. Let me show you this. This one here is actually the traditional one, mm -hmm. you know, where you make, where you make the potatoes like that. Or in America, you have them a little bit smaller, yeah. like this, you know. Mm -hmm. But we're not going to do it by hand today, no. you know. I, I, I want to show off my KitchenAid. And uh, so I'm just going to make little blocks so I can get it in there. <laughs> I think it's a, lot, it's a lot good. I measured the weight before, you know, so it's... <laughs> Like we said, it's a little less than two pounds. Becomes really um, a, a good thing when you let Swiss folk music run in the background. And as it happens, we recorded the whole record of Swiss folk music a while ago. We even got a prize for it. You got it displayed over there. The National is like a Grammy from Switzerland because we brought together American folk music and um, Swiss folk music and recorded this record with uh, Carlo Maya Brunner. They are absolutely amazing, uh, multi-award winning uh, Swiss folk musicians in, the, in, the, in Switzerland. And we recorded this and we're just gonna let this run in the background here. It's, a, it's gonna be available on our web store. So we're gonna let this run here in the back and see, uh, see that we uh, have a little bit of uh, Swiss folk music. Not to mention the garlic cannot do it, but it doesn't take much. Just maybe one, if you really like it, maybe two cloves for this whole pot, okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. There we are. Cut it lengthwise. And the hand to the ends. So, uh, how would you say this in English? This is, there's a, is a, a fondue pan. Pot, fondue pot. Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a cock claw. It's cock claw. Mm -hmm. claw. In, in Switzerland, that's what it's called. It's just a clay pot. There's nothing, there's nothing much to it. Um, they're actually quite inexpensive, you know. You could, you could get them, you know, on Amazon everywhere. But here, this is a, there's a little burner, burner thing. You know, we have this forever. And then there's a little, it's like a camping stove thing, you know, a warm, warm, one of these, you know, one of things down here. So we don't use that yet, but we're going to cook the fondue in this, in the, in this pot. In but the you can use pot. almost any kind of pot there is. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So what we do with the garlic, we just rub it inside uh, onto the sides of the pot. I'll just, I'll just, I'll just, like that, just sort of a little bit.
and then we just leave the uh, leave that leave the the cloves in there. And now, next step would be to add a little bit of cornstarch to the cheese. Yep. About a teaspoon, right? Yeah, I would. I would too. At least, yeah. So take a nice teaspoon of 800 grams. Yeah, is that enough? Yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. I usually mix a little bit with my, with my hand, so everything is nicely covered with a little bit of cornstarch. Yep, right. Cornstarch is important. Yeah, it is. It gives it the uh, it gives it the creaminess. Yes. So we can put this in the pot. And now, what what you, you okay. use you use about eight. No, about six, six to seven ounces per person, right? Around 200 grams, we say in Switzerland, but that's six ounces will be 180, seven ounces, 210, yeah. seven ounces. It's like, you know, it, it depends, you know, I mean, it, it, there's people, you know, who don't like to eat too much of it. But, but, but there's, but, there's <laughs> people like me who, <laughs> who eat for two, you know, so this is a... So, so the general rule, you know, I mean, rule, just the general idea is it's about half of the weight of the cheese. We're gonna put in it with a white wine. Uh, Uwe, you can actually you can put a half, you know, the, the, the about a half here and just squeeze the half a lemon. Wait a second, I have it in. I have this. This is nice. Oh, perfect. Okay, I'm gonna measure the, the wine. I can't see it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I just got about the half of the weight of the cheese, you know, which is about four deciliters, like, you know, 400 grams. But you can always, you know, readjust that after a while. So this is all put together. Mm -hmm. And now we put it on the stove. What do you think, Uwe? Yes, that looks great. Now, what I haven't thought of, Uwe, is that once we start cooking this, I cannot leave it anymore. I have to steer. Stir. Yeah. Stir, mm -hmm. not steer. Yes, stir. I'm getting an English lesson every time we do this. I'm sorry. No, no, no. No, no. I want this because, you know, yeah. you, hear me talk, you hear me speak. I, I need to get better. Um, so I think before we turn the stove on, why don't we play a song? Yeah, we turn this off here. Yes. Yeah, yeah. We turn this off and do real music. I mean, actual, you know, live music. That's what I mean. So what we're going to do now is we're going to sing a Swiss folk song that we wrote. <laughs> we never did this while we were in Switzerland. We wrote this on the way back from Branson, I think, one, one year, while we were watching a documentary that they made, Swiss TV made about our life. And so we came up with this little thing, and it's, it's in Swiss German, so I'm a little bashful singing it, you know, but the, um, it, it is, it's a wonderful thing. It's, it has... It's, it's because it has a part of it where everybody sings along in Switzerland. When we played at our shows, and we've done it over there a few times, even with the, with the quartet, with the contras when they came over with us. Yes. And when you have a thousand people in the room and everybody sings this along, sings along to the song, and it, it's just a wonderful feeling, you know. It, it really uh, is. And yeah. the song, the song about is about following your heart, doing what you think is right, um, and you know sometimes that's not easy to do. Yeah. But you have to just keep on doing what you think you need to do and what you think is right. And that, that encouragement is the song. Yes. So uh, that, that says, follow your heart. Mm -hmm. uh, always follow your heart. Yeah. <laughs> Und was ich zieh, ist schon vorbei und morgen 
Uh, I took per turn it on, on high for now just to just to get everything sort of you know warmed up quickly and then I go go down you know a little lower and then I just you know have to start keep steer, uh, 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 stirring uh, but uh, not right now I just have to wait a little bit Uwe is gonna cut the bread I think yeah I'm using a nice Swiss bread knife um, I'm gonna cut the about three quarters of an inch size slices first with the, uh, about this, like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks good. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Careful not, not to make it too big you know, and not too you small. Want, from all the foods mm -hmm. that Nino likes, he likes bread the best. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, he can't wait. You know, if I'm cutting a piece of bread, he he's heard. there. He's he right there. He, the he's he, he comes running in, you know, I'm telling you. <laughs> and when I have my slices, what I do is, I mean, what I do, this is, you know, this is a, just make these, so that you get nice square pieces. Yes, this is a beautiful bread. This is gonna be wonderful. And then cut it into cubes. That. Is that okay? Yes, looks fine. Okay. It looks fantastic. That's what I do. Watch the cheese, yeah. The cheese, yes, I watch the cheese. So, what they say, you should, you know, I don't have the right, how do you say this? English? Spatula? Spatula. There should be a smaller one with a hole in the middle, but I don't have that. But so what they say is that you should, uh, you know, stir it in a figure eight, but that's not possible right now because the cheese is not. The, the, actually, by the way, the, the lemon juice makes helps the cheese to break down and bind itself with the liquid. Otherwise, you know, it can easily be that the cheese just Separate. separates and becomes just one big lump of cheese, and you have the, the wine by itself. But you want it sort of to to become one um, uh, one, one one big mass of, of, of cheese, wine and cheese. And the, the the lemon juice helps it. The acid of the lemon juice helps it. That's why, you know, we used to just say, take a very tart, use a very tart white wine. It's sometimes hard to find, you know, but uh, 
because white wine tends to be very sweet anyway. But with the lemon juice, it really helps. So, you know, we, we had good friends from Wilkesboro come visit us in Switzerland many, many years ago. And, uh, and so we wanted to surprise them and we invited them to our home and uh, we made a, a fondue for them. And they had never smelled cheese that intense, nor had they cooked with wine or, you know, and, or schnapps. I think they were very um, uh, religious people uh, who don't drink much alcohol. You know, we don't do either, but, uh, but they, they were, very, I didn't know all these things, you know, so, so we just made this, this dish and they were very suspicious looking and very kind, very, very nice, but then we put it on the table. And then the lady, she, she, I said, she said, how are we going to eat this? And I said, well, we'll just stick the fork in there with a piece of bread and stir it around. And, you know, I'm going to tell you about that later. But she's, and then I, I, she done it, she took it out and said, now you eat it. And then she, <laughs> she smelled and then she, her mouth would get a little closer. And then it took a long time for the fork to actually come close to the mouth that she could sort of get a little taste on her lip. And she went like, ah. I, I, I'm not so, I don't think I'm so hungry tonight. <laughs> and I realized, my goodness, she really don't like this. And, but she was so polite, she would not tell me. And then we made her something else. We had, we had some other food at home. But the funniest thing was, we came back to, to Carolina and everybody knew in Brooks County, you know, all of her friends knew, she had Swiss fondue in Switzerland. <laughs> Put some pepper in it. Uh, actually, there's there's people in Switzerland who actually like to put a lot of different spices in, or really change it up a lot, um, and that's good. It really is, you know. Um, and I have some nutmeg. That's traditional. Mm -hmm. to put a little bit of nutmeg and a little little pepper in here, and that's it. I think the fondue, yeah, the fondue like that, is about much ready. That's the traditional fondue. Now, as soon as it starts bubbling, yeah. like it does now. Then we can transfer it over to the burner. You can yes, use. But I have to get ready here with. You can use a traditional American, like a buffet uh, warmer. That would work perfectly for this. Or if you have a little electric element that you that 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 you get for camping or garage or something like that, that works yeah, great too. Camping cookers. <laughs> camping cookers work great. In the French part of, uh, of Switzerland, a lot of people do this dish in the summer and do it outside because it really can get your house smelling like cheese. And if you don't like that, then you do it outside on your porch. It's a wonderful thing to do at any time of the year. Um, now, what we got is some uh, cherry brandy, but not the sweet kind. It's really just a clear, cherry brandy liquor it's not the one uh, it's not it's not a liqueur in a sense you know it's not a sweet it's it's brandy. it's brandy yes and so it's from switzerland this is in willisau distilled but there's all kinds of you know swiss style or european style yeah. cherry yeah. but it's very, that's very traditional as well so in the end we just put a little bit of this cherry in this in this cheese and that's it just mix it like hurry up Ready to eat. That was a, such a such a quick menu. Are you excited? Yes, I'm excited. <laughs> okay, so you put some bread on your on your plate. Okay. Just, just oh, okay. Perfect. Like that. Mm -hmm. And then uh, what we're gonna do in Switzerland? You just stick a piece of bread so it holds really well onto the onto the onto the crust, or you know, so, so it holds really well. And then you steer it, you would steer it around with cheese, and then you put it right in your mouth and eat it. 
But we're not going to do this because it's COVID time, you know, and we don't, and maybe you're afraid of doing this with other people. The hot cheese will prevent, you know, um, the spread of germs. The spread of yeah. germs, you know, anyway, but, you know, better safe than sorry. We just want to teach you another way. So let's just uh, go in yeah. here. We need to always, not just bump it in, but always steer also around the bottom. So we make sure that the cheese is not sticking to anything. So it's always a, a job. Yes, yeah, so right? you do have to be sure you've got your bread on good or you'll lose your bread. Well, the, uh, you what was... Then for it. What's that? Yeah. Well, there, then, you, then you turn your, your fork on. You turn on your the, fork around and, and then, then you bring it over to your plate. And you take the other fork and get the piece of bread down. Mm -hmm. Okay? Gotcha. Yep. And then, uh, uh, then you can try it. Let's see how this is. Careful. It's hot. It's, it's not hot. that hot. Mm -hmm. Mm, that's good. You like it? That's better than pizza. <laughs> you like it? Mm -hmm. That's mm. good. So, traditionally, people would drink black tea with it, right? Okay. Or um, they discovered you know, that Coca Cola is actually quite good. But, you know, then, but we have also the white wine that we put in here. We can have a little glass of this, just a little sip, maybe, you know. Prost. Also, some people. See, I have some of the of the of the kirsch here, and some people actually like to, you know, put the bread and then they put it a little bit in the kirsch, just to, just oh, just touch it, okay. and then sure. go into the go into the cheese. Did you steer? I stir, did. So I stir, did, not steer. Stir. Stay in there too, Mom. This is okay. too good. Okay. Now, do you just dip bread, or is there other things you can dip in? Well, you, you, you can dip potatoes too. Mm -hmm. But yeah, but could, yeah, but bread is the traditional thing to do. Meat. No meat, usually not. But our father, in the sixties, had a business meeting with an American, you know, with Americans mm -hmm. in Geneva, and they wanted to eat something real Swiss. So they went, you know, with their business, they went and eat a fondue in a restaurant, and so they ordered a little pot for everybody. You know, everybody had a little little pot, and and. Uh, and so the American tried, he said, hmm. So he, he asked the, 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 the chef to come out of the kitchen. He said, can you bring me some potatoes, uh -huh. some cooked potatoes? And he said, yes. And so he brought him some cooked potatoes. So he put all the cooked potatoes into the, into the fondue. And then he said, I need some ketchup. And he got some ketchup, he put a lot of ketchup in it. He stirred it around, he took a spoon and he ate the bowl. And he said, I really love to switch the Swiss kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> Really good. <laughs> really good. You know, the, the Swiss cheese fondue is a very social meal. Uh, people love to sit, you know, after skiing or hiking in a lodge up in the mountains together on a round table. They eat fondue. It's just something that you laugh together about. You know, you tell funny stories. You're together. It's a it's a good time to eat fondue together. It's it's a gathering food. Really is, and so. Sometimes, you know, Swiss families eat a fondue per, one fondue per week, you know, with their children or invite their neighbors over or with their parents. And, you know, it's just something that is, that is very, so, very social, you know. And of course, you know, we don't, we're just, you know, just eat and everybody's just, you know, or people take an entire set of fondue, you know, and take it out uh, and actually do it out in, in, by a river or go take it on a hike and then they just sit there and make a little fondue. And it's a great winter food, you know. Because it really heats you up and you can easily overeat so you gotta be careful oh, I see that. <laughs> and, and when you lose your bread there were always punishments right yes that's that is the funniest what thing. did you say what well the, the, the first one is usually you know when, when you dip your when you lose your first piece of bread in the fondue you have to do the dishes <laughs> the second one you got to clean up and the third one well, a traditional one used to be you have to run around the snow outside naked. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you were looking outside of the snow. <laughs> oh, the naked part scares me more than the snow. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, 
<laughs> well, there's lots of people who actually dip, they like to dip peaches in there or mm. pieces of pineapple really? or apple actually taste really mm. good. Yeah. Yeah. Air, yeah. yeah, so we usually, you know, when we make it, we have a few apples and a few, a few different. But this is just really the basic recipe mm -hmm. of it. You can look it up on the internet maybe and find more ideas. But it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful meal. And it's, it doesn't and taste bread, good. bread, that Dutch oven bread, episode 11, uh -huh. is perfect. And it is so easy to make. Don't be shy. If you've never made bread like me, I did it and I was successful. Episode 11 yeah. for the Dutch oven mm -hmm. bread. So. <laughs> But you can use another bread from like the bakery section or your, sure. your supermarket yeah. and just maybe bake it a little more than normal so you have a nice crust. Right. Mm -hmm. right. You know, the sourdough breads and everything that works. All kinds of bread work well yeah. as long as they keep together, like you said before. Mm, right? turn out really, really yeah, good. Jens, yeah. I, have, I want to stop filming because I want to eat some okay, of this. Okay, let's eat. Well, <laughs> you all take care. How, how do we say it in Swiss German? Ein guter Mitternacht. Ein guter Mitternacht, <laughs> yes. <laughs> but there's got, there was not that much music in this one, but we got, we're going to have a full weekend of. We had just a, we had just had actually you know a full weekend of music again. Visit us on our uh, on our shows, the musical world of the Kruger Brothers, because this is what we actually do. <laughs> but uh, we'll we'll see you, we'll see you around. You all take care. Bye bye. Bye bye. pepper on my, on my plate. Oh, that's a good, that's good, yeah. And then when I take my, my piece of bread out and it's, it's done a little bit, just dip it in the, in the pepper. See, like that. Oh. It turned out good, huh? This is my first bite. Mm -hmm. And Nina, what do you think? What do you think? What do you think? It's good, huh? <laughs> Here to America. Now we have good friends, uh, Tom and Coletti and uh, Sandy and his family, and, and they're, they're Amish, they're from the Amish community. And they ran the Shiro General store out here. And they sold, you know, uh, fresh cut cheeses and uh, you know, the whole deli. And so we became friends, and uh, he was very interested about Switzerland and the culture because the Pennsylvania Dutch is, you know, the, the, the Amish are from Switzerland, they, you know, original. Mm -hmm. It's Amal from being from Emmetal, Bern. But so he was interested in how you make fondue because they never had fondue, really. So we uh, uh, we said, okay, let's try it with American cheeses. So uh, we went over there and we uh, tried I don't know how many different pots of fondue all afternoon uh, with the family and trying to find a recipe out of American cheeses. So we used cookies back then, you know, that we have in bought here. What else did we use? Yarnsburg, Cheddars, Cheddars, yes, and you know, they were all tasting different than what we made here today, but they were not bad in any way, so, you know, they're just different, and when you go to a cheese fondue place in Adama, then your husband to a place out here in Raleigh, and they went to eat cheese fondue, and I mean, they came, I said, how was it, and they said, well, nothing, they didn't have a single. It, they didn't have one single fondue that tasted like a Swiss fondue, but it was all good food. <laughs> so we're not too strict about you know what you what you can do with it. But I, you know, but today we just you know this is just a basic Swiss recipe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.